Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Grant Talks Funny Bits. Um, this week we are testing once again the 1080 HD option. Um, so we tried this before. We had some sound issues. So if you're out there and you can hear me, please let me know in the comment section. Um, and then I know everything is going good. Um, tonight's guest, um, we've had hypnotists from all over the world on this show. Tonight we've got a hypnotist that has been all over the world and his hometown is just down the road from me here which is amazing this guy not only is a stage hypnotist of over 20 years you can see him in panto music videos television shows this man gets everywhere he is mr entertainment as well as that he's also got a book on stage hypnosis which is a real nuts and bolts and tells you about the real life of, of a working stage hypnotist so without further ado i'm going to play my little bit of graphic and then we'll bring our guest on so please Make some noise, bang your keyboard, get in that comment section and welcome to Grant Talks Funny Bits, the man, the myth, the legend that is awesome, Rawson, Dave Rawson. Hey, Hi. Hi, thank you for uh, allowing me the chance to chat with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for coming on. I mean, I think you're the same as me. We're not, we've not got too many gigs in the book at the moment, so it's nice to have a bit of spare time, uh, but it's... Good to have you in the UK at this moment in time. You're probably one of the most well-travelled hypnotists that's out there. I know you do love your travelling. Um, but, yeah, I mean, where did where did that start from? I know you were in the Navy originally. Uh, yeah. what, took you, what took you from the Navy to the stage? Well, when I was I was in the Navy 22 years, and seven years prior to, to before I left, um, I, I was always a magician from the age of 20, but about 33 I took up stage hypnosis after reading the Ormond McGill book. Yeah. And um, then that enthralled me. And then I just started doing shows when I wasn't at sea. And then I thought, this is what I want to do seven years later when I leave the Navy. I want to go live in the sun. Yeah. And uh, I'm performing the sun. And that was my dream. And then seven years later, the Navy kicks you out. And uh, so that's why I just turned professional and went straight to Spain. And, and that was it. And it was my life for 20 years. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, you were you you're resident uh, in Ibiza, um, Hong Kong. Uh, it, was, it was a hard rock cafe in Hong Kong you did. Uh, yeah. For, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you've definitely been around the world. Do you think uh, your, your Navy, your military experience has helped you with your stage presence? And I was speaking to Richard Barker, who's ex-military, um, Carl Smith, ex-military. Quite a lot of um, good professional hypnotists have got some kind of police or military or entertainment background. Yeah, absolutely. Because in the military, they, they uh, teach you various things. And then you do a bit of teaching or instructing. I was an instructing for three years um at uh, um, institute of naval medicine so i was teaching a lot of students uh, for three years before i left the navy so there's all that that helps yeah. as well I used to talk to people you know being in classroom and, and so many so yeah that helped a, a big deal as well yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's it's one of those things that um as a performing hypnotist um you very much like me in the sense of we've not been we've not really pushed the training side of things when it comes to stage hypnosis because we're out there doing stage hypnosis um and there's a, there's a lot of people not you know not not to slag off anybody in the industry but there's a lot of people that train stage hypnosis that don't do stage hypnosis and those that do it don't want to train people because it's you know it's it's taking money out of our pockets really so i absolutely agree with you i i i, I only used to teach one person a year if they'd mm. come out to be so I'd teach them. And that was it. I wouldn't teach anymore because, yeah. again, it was my livelihood and I didn't want them to come to Ibiza and, you know, take my job, some younger guy coming in yeah. and ditching some older guys. So uh, that's, that was just my personal choice, you know. So I just yeah. did that. I only taught a handful, but, yeah, it's something I enjoyed doing and they, they're out working and uh, one of them has now sadly passed away, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah, but I enjoyed it, yeah. 
Speaking speaking of teaching, we've got uh, Brian Glenn who runs uh, Innovisions Hypnotherapy School, who's in sunny Spain himself. Now he's he's here to say hi. So hi, Brian. Oh, hi, Brian. Hi. Whereabouts in Spain is he? Um, Brian, whereabouts in Spain are you? I think it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> but Brian will let us know in the comments, and then we'll we'll, we'll bring it up. Uh, I believe he lives in a cave, though, which which sounds weird. Um, but he's got this beautiful uh, property out there, which is is like a, a nice house that then moves yeah. into a cave as well, which is is really cool. Um, oh. But yeah, he he he's an ex stage hypnotist that runs uh, probably one of the biggest hypnotherapy training schools. So yeah, he's a great guy, nice guy. Um, so yeah, um, obviously. Um, we're both grounded at the moment, as I think every stage it misses is in the world. And it's it's one of those things, because of what we do, it's difficult to see where the end is in sight for that when we can be back on stages again. Um, but yeah, you've had some um, you've had some challenges in your career recently with your your health, uh, which is I, I, I was explaining to someone this afternoon. They went, oh, uh, who's, who's this Dave Wilson? I went, oh, it's awesome, we're awesome. And I go, why? She's going, why is he awesome? I went, because they just, they just can't kill him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're indestructible. So yeah. yeah. So at yeah. At the moment, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. Uh, Brian says he's thirty minutes from Benidorm. Oh yeah, I know Benidorm. Yeah. Benidorm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jeff's here as well. Uh, just great to see another episode. So the good thing is we've got we've got sound this week. I've been testing this this out uh, uh, the software, and a couple of weeks ago I had Richard Barker on. Um, oh, yeah. It was it was HD like it is tonight, but we had no sound whatsoever. Uh, so we'd got all the way through the show before I saw the comments, and it's like oh never mind. So luckily we've got it going tonight. But again, that's that's one of the things about being on stage. You know, we've got to learn to kind of juggle chainsaws because anything can happen at any moment. And, uh, you know, you've got to you've got to roll with it. What's the and I suppose you get asked this all the time. What's the strangest thing that's happened to you on stage, Dave? Oh, God, the strangest or, or the God, the strangest <laughs> thing is when nobody comes on stage and you have to go home. Yes. This thing. And that has happened to me quite a few times when oh. no. And I've been in a venue and nobody's come on stage. And you can't shift them on stage full of no money. Yeah. And so I would just go home. And yeah. it, would, it used to really upset me in the beginning. And now I just, okay, I'm off home. I go home. It, it, yeah. But, the, you know. But it happens to us all, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. it's. Oh. I always say that there used to be, uh, I'll not mention names, um, but I can get carried away as a bit of a gossip sometimes. Um, there used to be a very busy stage hypnotist in the UK that doesn't work anywhere now, who always said that he, he shows, he always knocked it out of the park, never had a bad show, never had no, no shows, none of that. And I kind of thought, you're either lying yeah. or you're not doing enough shows. Yeah, exactly. You know? You know, I always say uh, out of 10 shows, you've got two where you smack it out of the park and you, you can walk on water. You know, you've got loads of shows in the middle that are, you know, mediocre, still still good, what, what we would call mediocre. And then every now and then you get one of those that just when you think you're yeah. brilliant, you get that show that teaches you a, a, a lesson or two. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yeah. It's good to do that, though, because otherwise you'd be up there all the time, wouldn't you? And you'd yeah. be thinking you were this and that, and you're not. You're just a normal person doing a job. So when yeah. he hits you in the in the face, you're like, wow. So, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. 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 And I think that's that's the right mindset. Um, it's, yeah. it is, it's a job. It's, it's what we do. Kind yeah, of, uh, you know, normally day in, day out, it becomes a job. I know sometimes, and I speak to uh, Ian D about this, um, sometimes the mental health of performers is is at risk because you'll go to a show, you know, you've got the, the highs of the show, the lows of the show, and then the long journey home, and that can, that can take its toll on you sometimes. Yeah. So, obviously, you love the sunshine. Um, yeah. What what do you feel is the main difference between between a UK audience and like uh, like Hong Kong, Thailand, or an Asian audience versus Ibiza resort audiences? Which is your favourite crowd to work to? Cruise ships, yeah. Because the, the, to them, the, you've got a ready made audience, and they just yeah come on stage. You've been on them, and they come on stage, and and it's it's the easiest show I've ever done in the world. Easy. Mm. 
um, in, Ta in Thailand, Hong Kong was good because I had a translator and that was very strange um, mm. because you're saying it in English and you get some of the people who do speak English, some of the Chinese, and then some who don't speak any English at all. And then you're having to wait for her to translate it before you're waiting for the action. And it's surreal, to say the least. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I've not, you know, not up until this moment, I've not worked with a translator yet. The yeah. One of the very first cruise ships I ever did, most yeah. of the audience were retired Germans that couldn't speak very good English. I wish yeah. I'd have had a translator on that one. That was a, that was a challenge. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Course. So, that, so that's the... The only difference, the Ibiza audiences, um, it, many years ago, when I used to do the 1830s, they, they mm. were great. They were so easy. And then about 10 years on the line, I saw the, as the kids, dare I say, are growing up and coming through, it was, they were changing. Yeah. And it, it was, it was terrible. You, you were getting abuse. You get it was awful, and in the end, I just stopped doing the 1830s because of yeah. the abuse I was getting, which I didn't need, didn't ask for. I was just out there to do a show, you yeah. know. But in the beginning, they were great, and then the other shows, um, that I used to do in Ibiza are just all family shows because yeah. it is all family oriented hotels that you work in, and yeah, that's it. So, yeah, all family shows. I think I think stage hypnosis has, has moved along those lines. I think it did used to be, you know, you had to be the most outrageous, the most shocking, the most whatever. Um, but I do think it has now, uh, in the UK market, it has moved to a more family-friendly show. You know, yeah. holiday parks now do a lot of hypnosis shows. And it is, you know, if, if you're doing that material that's going to, offend people holiday parks aren't going to like it but yeah it's it i mean you know i'm biased and i'm sure you are too i think comedy stage hypnosis is one of the best types of shows you can put out there because you've got everything you've got comedy music laughter drama it's all there it doesn't have to be let's get someone you know doing something ridiculous and i think it can undermine it a little bit sometimes yeah absolutely yeah and the you the comedy comes from them not from you you're the vehicle exactly. there the they're the the ones who are, who are who are making the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So we've got a, a clip here from your show, which is a great clip as well. Um, I'm going to play this now, and then afterwards we'll have a bit of a chat about it. But, it's, you know, it's, there's multiple levels of stuff in here. For hypnotists that are watching, that are interested in stage or performance side of hypnosis, like for hypnotherapists that want to do public talks, there's, there's a great examples of this, of working with a, a, a loud, you know, quite boisterous audience, but your control is there throughout um, and it's, it's, yeah, your stage presence is really great in this. So I'm going to bring this clip in now and I shall see you on the other side. Uh, have you ever met me before tonight's show? No. No, okay. And um, we're going to have a competition, right? I am going to try and read your mind. You can give me three questions about yourself. If I don't get them, then you can have a drink off me every question I get wrong. Is that okay? So as an example, you can say, Right, Dave, what number house do I live at? What's my favourite number? What car do I drive? Uh, any, any questions at all, and I'll try and read your mind to get the answer. Is that okay? Right, so let's I've never met Jojo before. Here we go. We'll have a little guess. Here we go. So first question then, Jojo. What car do you drive? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's in these um, medium psychics and everything. You wonder how it's done. Tonight, I'm going to show you how it's done. She just asked me, what car does she drive? I'm now going to read her mind and tell her. Here we go. Sleep. Hold your balance. Jojo, what car do you drive? Sit. Good. When you wake up, you ask me that question. You cannot remember you told me the answer. Not remember you told me the answer. Why do it, by the way? Now, then, would you like to ask me? We'll have a little competition. You can ask me three questions and anything I've told about yourself. If I don't get them, you can have a drink every question I get wrong. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to ask me question number one? What car do you drive? Each say um, uh, uh, your lady, each put a red one. Yeah. A Citroen. Yeah. In three, is that right? How do you know that? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, that's the question team, make it a bit more difficult for me. What's my cat's name? What's your cat's name? Okay, good, sleep. What's your cat's name? I've got four. Four? <laughs> 
you lot have got to remember these now, I'm telling you. Here we go. Tell me, here we go. Got arrow. Arrow. Peanut. I'm glad she said peanut, yeah? Ticks. Ticks. Cocoa. Cocoa. Chocolate. I like chocolate. Good. Arrow. Peanut. Twigs and... Cocoa. Okay. You're going to remember it because I'm going to say I don't know, I'm going to ask the audience and she'll be amazed. Here we go. So when you wake up, you'll ask that question and uh, you can't remember you told me the answer. Why do I do it? Okay. Um, would you like to ask me a question number two? Make it a bit more difficult for me now. Yeah, can you name my cats? Cats? That means you've got more than one. Um, you, I'm not sure. Uh, coming through, one, two, you've not got two, three. You've got four cats, is that right? Yeah. I'm not sure of the names of them. Let's see the audience, see if they'll guess. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the first one, the first one was... Yeah. Arrow? Yeah. Right, second one? Yeah. He not? They met my mum. No. Third one? Yeah. Twix? Yeah. Fourth one? Yeah. Coco, is that right? Yeah, I'm a bit freaked out now. <laughs> Do you know how they know? Because they're in your pussies. That's why. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, nice. really funny, really funny. So, yeah, do you think being a stage hypnotist has helped you with your pantomime stuff? Um, yes and no. I was always an idiot. when I, Even when I was in the Navy, I was an idiot. I was always messing yeah. about. Um, I used to write a weekly magazine at, at sea, so I'd get all the comments of people and, and make it. So I've always been... An, totally mad yeah. and uh, so it, it just helped you know and then yeah it, it, just a natural progression yeah to panto should we say for want of a better word yeah yeah but it was well, a learning imagine. yeah i can imagine because you, you've done uh or, or you normally do which is it is it the doncaster sheffield which Castle. one is it Castleford, that's it. I, I knew it was there in the middle. Yeah. So, but yeah, I saw that last year, and that looked that looked like it was an amazing experience as well. Um, and yeah, you got to you got to incorporate hypnosis within the pantomime as well, didn't you? Well, yeah, it, it was a, a spoof of it. Yeah, spoof. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, it was a good spoof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So, what's 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 next for you? I mean, you know, what's your plans after? After all this is done with, you know, by Christmas or by by whenever, what's your next plans? You've you've already got a book out, um, yeah. which is the is it the guide for a successful hypnosis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, the I'm successful out. stage hypnotist guide, uh, yeah, yeah. which is a great book on Amazon, yeah, uh, and available on Kindle. So I will put a link to that in the uh, comment section as well. Um, and again, it's it's a great book from a working hypnotist it's not a, a textbook but there's there's a few books out there for stage hypnotists that are called textbook stage hypnosis books you go through it and it's the same stuff that's been regurgitated from the book before it and the book before it and you can tell when that person isn't necessarily in the trenches out there performing um and and your book you is is a good book for anyone that's interested in actually being successful in stage hypnosis that's the plug done with <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> what would you say uh um apart from your book if you were to recommend another book for anyone else that's either been an inspiration to you on a business or a hypnosis level what would that be well m when i first got into hypnosis um it, i was reading um William Hewitt, it was only a, a, a hypnotherapy, and it was about £7, and it was a very good starter because it was uh, telling you A, B, C, D, what, how to say it, you know, reading mm. the, the reading it out for, and then it, it, incorporating lose weight, well, this is what you say for this, uh, no smoking, then you put this paragraph in. So that was a good book for, for doing the hypnotherapy side, but mm. the Ormond McGill, the classic one was what I initially bought, but when I bought it, I bought the original one, the the orange, the red book, as yes. got years ago. And um, the, the trouble, well, not trouble with it. 
you will I was learning in 1993 stage hypnosis from 1901. Yeah. Not from 1993. So yeah. I'm 100 years later still learning this slow, you know, hypno hypnosis to put them in trance, whereas I went yeah. to fast. And so that was, was where I started. I must admit, you know, I've, I've seen your show and you, you put them in trance fast yeah. you know uh, i know a lot of hypnotists kind of leave that bit out of any dvds that they sell uh, if you get chance to see dave go and see him because it is an education in rapid kind of inductions for the stage as well so yeah an absolute must so yeah um again being a, a resort hypnotist in in ibiza and everywhere else uh, you do a lot of back of room sales. I know in the UK it's not as big as what it is kind of in, in America or in Spain or Ibiza. Um, you know, what's what's your secret to that? Do you have any keys or tips for people that are wanting to up their back of room game as such? Um, not really. I found it more difficult as the years went on. I, in the beginning, it was fantastic. Y you could sell, you know, call to Newcastle it was easy yeah but as the years went by it, it was becoming a real struggle to sell um I video all my shows uh, for two mm. reasons one to sell it and one for uh to keep in case of any any problems yeah. from any future you yeah. know of any wants to do your etc so I keep a copy of every show um so um, no, it, it's just the people have changed. They've got their own phone, so they're, they're just happy to get that yeah. little bit of them, their friends on it. And, you know, and then it's like you you, you want to sell the Stop Smoking CDs, blah, blah. And I always would invite people to come and see me after the show and ask me any question and say that somebody would come up from, let's say, Newcastle and they say, oh, um, I don't know, I'd like to stop smoking. And I say, well, there's two things you can either uh, obtain a CD off me or you don't have to buy one off me. You can get one off the internet, off anybody you, anybody from the internet, your choice. Or you can, uh, I'd refer them to, I wouldn't know any hypnotherapists in Newcastle, but I'd say, why don't you, you know, look on Google, uh, look up to a hypnotherapist in your area. And they'd mm. go, well, how do, do you know them? i go, no. And they'd say, well, how do I know they're any good? And I'm well, how do you know I'm any good? And they'd go, because mm. I've just seen your show. And I said, but, you know, the, that everybody's doing, you know, they'd they be able to help you. And I'd always refer yeah. to a hypnotherapy, always. Yeah. Always do. And that's, there was, there was a fair few years where the hypnotherapy community and the stage hypnosis community didn't, didn't necessarily see eye to eye. A lot yeah. of hypnotherapists saw stage hypnosis as, um, kind of belittling the craft of hypnosis or hypnotherapy. Whereas the reality is, you know, the principles that we use on stage, one, help the hypnotherapist in their practice room, and two, we're the best advert for hypnosis for change. Because if you can make Uncle Tom do something ridiculous and out of character on stage, then surely you can help someone stop smoking or lose weight. So, yeah, it's, yeah. I think sometimes it's easy for a hypnotherapist that hasn't experienced stage hypnosis to maybe go that this, this gives an, an unrealistic expectation. And it's kind of like, well, if that's what they expect, then give it to them. You know, when they come in your, your therapy room, give them some razzle dazzle, you know, have a swinging watch, do meet their expectations and their beliefs. Yeah, there you go, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff has said it exactly there. I use my shows to fill my practice. What better advert for hypnosis than doing hypnosis? And I think Oops. I think it's a confidence thing. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I, Brian exactly says the same. If there were no stage hypnotist, hypnotherapy would be dead. Ex yeah. Exactly that. There's a lot of people, and you'll get it on from stage shows as well. I've had people come to me afterwards and go, I didn't think I could be hypnotized because I went to go see a hypnotherapist once and I felt relaxed, but I don't know if it worked or not. And it's kind of like you want to give them a profound experience. Yeah. It's not for your ego. In that therapy room, if something weird happened and profound, they'll go, oh, if that's happened, then I have been hypnotized. So there's definitely there's a middle ground where we, we all meet that kind of helps everybody out. Yeah. So, yeah, I always try and, and I know you do the same. We do what we do to push hypnosis out there in a positive way. 
Absolutely, yeah, I've done tons of hypnotherapy as well and I've had some amazing results and, and it's some of them have blown my mind, mm. you know. So it's unbelievable what the mind can achieve. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing. I mean, it's one of the things, and, and all as a performer, you're the same. It's you know, we get our we get our fix from being on stage and from helping people and entertaining people. And there's a lot of there's a lot of emphasis that should be put on when you're on stage entertaining people that you should be an entertainer. Absolutely, entertainer and doing hypnosis, not the Absolutely. other way. Absolutely, yeah. And- yeah there's a lot of uh i've i've seen it um sometimes sometimes i think the transition from hypnotherapy to stage hypnotist can be a challenge because it's a it's a different mindset uh but like say ex-military stand-up comedian if you've got an entertainment background that helps there's always exceptions to that but you know it's it's you've got to be an entertainer first that uses hypnosis because when you do have a, a bad show and you can't get the volunteers doing what you want them to do, you know, as rare as they are, you've still got to be entertaining. That audience has still got to feel like they've got something from it, giving some value. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, where could – well, I was going to say, I'll get your website here, which is a great domain name, by the way. Um, <laughs> stagehypnotist.co.uk uh, there's some stuff on there that people can buy from you your hypnotherapy stuff's on there as well and I'll also put up a link in the descriptions later on for your Amazon book which I would highly recommend um, and also um, if you get a chance to see Dave in Panto definitely do that as well and uh, yeah uh, background work I mean I do, I've do. i done a little bit of Coronation Street and some little bit of background work but you've done some some rap videos you've worked with some really cool people as well is that is that is acting an angle where you're going to go into now? Because who was the comedy magician you did? You did a, a, a sketch show as a comedy magician. Can't you put me on the spot now? I'm proud. Oh, do, do you mean me taking the mic out yes. of me? Yes. Oh, Gyromo. Yeah. That's it, Gyromo. Oh, yeah, that was that was that was great. Was that? Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I've, I'm now going into um, writing comedy. So Mm -hmm. I've written two TV comedies. I wrote one last year, and I was going to put it on a theatre, and then I obviously had the heart attacks and I couldn't do it. And that and that one was um, um, called Terry and Jackie's English Bar, and it's basically about um, a comedy of people who go to Spain every year and they they go to the same place, the same bar, they sit in the same seat, they sing the same karaoke songs, they have the same drinks, they don't, nothing's changed for 25 years. I wrote a comedy about that and then quite, and this year in lockdown, I I get a bit bored and so (laughs) I wrote another comedy and um, my partner is a Lionel Richie fan and she's um, a member of Lionel Richie's fan club and so i decided to to just write all this comedy about um lion richie fan club and what they get up to and it's had amazing reviews and the scripts been well good so that's what i'm doing at the moment writing while we're in lockdown yeah it's it's the best when we started lockdown i said i was going to write a book um but i've not done it and it's too late now so maybe that's for the next global pandemic i'll write a book then it's never too late grand no. <laughs> <laughs> you could be not doing a show for another two years and you could oh have- i know i know <laughs> I, I mean i try and stay positive but literally every, every now and then the phone will ring and it'll be an agent and i'm like well maybe they want a date and they're like can we just cancel this date and i'm like oh cheers yeah not a problem <laughs> yeah sure so, yeah. just go with the flow Exactly. Do you know what it is? It's I had some dark moments at the beginning of this, as everybody did, um, but I'm now at the point where it's taught me a lot about my life and the negative habits and spending habits that I had. You know, you, you kind of you, you build up a certain level of success, and it's all none of it means anything. Nice. Um, and this it's, it's it's a great leveler. You know, it's a great thing that makes you go. None of that's important. None of that's important, and just just go like you said, go with the flow. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, so yeah, I must I must mention your partner as well. I think you two are actually one of the cutest couples on Facebook. To be fair, oh. you're always when you're together, you're always so happy and beaming, which is a great thing to have. 
Um, yeah. And I think doing what we do, it's good to have that support network at home as well. Someone that you can, after a bad show, kind of offload a little bit as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks very so much. So where's where do you plan on going next? Where's your next dream holiday destination? Because you've been everywhere. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Mars. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, um, I've no idea. We, we have I genuinely no idea. I like to go far afield. I love Thailand. I love Asia. It's yeah. amazing. So I don't know yet. Where, wherever they're going to let us in, I'll go yeah. in the sun. As long as it's sunny, I'll go. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And I must admit, consider, considering the uh, the weather we've had in this August, like it's oh. August and it's grey and rainy outside. I'm I'm disappointed. I'm going to stop paying my council tax until we get some sunshine. I think. <laughs> Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure. To sum up, if you were to give any budding hypnotherapist that wants to be on stage, uh, or anyone that's watching that wants to get into comedy or anything like that, if you were to give them one nugget, one piece of advice that you wish someone would have given you all those years ago, what would it be? Follow your dream. Oh, I love it. I love it. Guys, thank you very much for being with us. Dave, thank you for taking the time out to spend this with us. Um, I wish you well, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on stage again very soon. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for allowing me to uh, be interviewed by you. Thanks so much. All right, buddy. Oh. Cheers. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye.